Hello everyone, this is Danny from creatingawebstore.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to list a simple product in Magento. To start, simply go to your admin panel. Before I go to my admin panel, I just want to show you that my store is currently empty. I just set up Magento and I'm showing you uh, how to do this. I also have a store that already has products listed which I will use to demonstrate how uh, the simple product uh, creation works. So to start, we're simply going to go to Catalog and then Manage Products. And then we're going to click on Add Product. And now we're going to choose our attribute set. If you're not familiar with attribute sets, uh, you can actually watch my other video which uh, explains how attributes work. And then simply uh, select your uh, product type, which in my case will be Simple Product, and click Continue. Now once on this page you will be asked to enter in a name for the item. Here I will just use uh, information from an item that I already have created to make this video a little shorter for you. But I will explain what each field uh, actually does. So now I will actually use this information here. This will be my title. And now the quick overview is actually the short description here. And now the details, this would be the actual description. As for SKU, this is uh, a number that you can enter in uh, as you'd like. For example, I can enter in one since this is my first uh, item that I'm listing. As for weight, you can enter in uh, any weight. In my case, I'll just put in one for one pound. As for set product as new from date, set product as new to date, these are the dates that uh, this product will con be considered as new. I will just leave it blank. As for status, whether you'd like to enable or disable the product, in my case it will be enabled. And as for URL key, this is this path right here. So you can enter in any information you'd like. Uh, for SEO uh, reasons, it's best to enter in uh, a path that actually uh, includes the name of the item. Uh, try to leave out any type of uh, special characters. For example, I wouldn't enter in quotes or anything like that. Just keep it simple. Uh, the best way to do it would be to just enter in, uh, for example, uh, Nine West uh, Women's uh, Lucero Pump and um, I would leave out the apostrophe because uh, in URLs you should not enter in anything like that. To play it safe uh, I would say just enter in uh, letters, numbers and dashes that would be best and also remember when creating another item to not use the same URL key that you used on a existing item because then um, you will run into problems so to keep it simple, I'll just enter in women's dash pumps. And for visibility, you're going to want to choose uh, the type of uh, visibility that you want for your item. Not visible individually would be, uh, it wouldn't show up anywhere. Catalog, I mean it would only show up in catalog. Search, it would only show up in search. Catalog search, only in catalog and search. I will choose catalog and search since I want people to find it both on my product listing pages and by searching for the item. And country of manufacturer, you would enter in your country of manufacturer. This of course is optional. I'll enter it though. And then uh, click on save and continue. On the prices page, we will be entering in a price for our item. In this case, I'm going to enter in 9.99. Group price, if you have uh, groups for your customers, for example, if you have a wholesale customer group, here you would enter in the price for that wholesale customer group. As for special price, if you want to uh, offer the item at a reduced price, you can enter in, for example, $8.99, and this would be the retail, and if you want to set a special price uh, from date and to date, you would enter in the dates when you want this item to go on sale for $8.99 rather than the regular price which is $9.99. As for tier pricing, uh, this is where you would enter in a tier price. For example, if someone buys uh, three pairs of pumps, you can reduce the price. 
here uh, by clicking on this uh, button here and then uh, choosing which group and you can actually uh, enter in all groups and just offer the item for example here you would enter in the quantity and then the reduced price as for apply MAP uh, this is where uh, you would show um, items at a reduced uh, price only after the item was added to the cart for example uh, you can enter in the manufacturer suggested retail price here and then you would enter in uh, you would choose how you want this to be uh, set up as far as do you want it as MAP uh, display actual price in cart before order confirmation on gesture etc so this is again up to you as for tax class you would enter in your uh, tax class here uh, if you choose none uh, no tax will be added to the item and then simply click on save and continue now we can proceed to meta information this is actually very important uh, the meta information here is uh, what uh, search engine robots see for example there are other uh, types of uh, automated uh, scripts that see this information uh, Facebook for one uh, so anything that you enter here for example the meta title this is shown in the browser which would show up right here you can actually see the meta tags by uh, looking at the HTML source code see this would be the meta title tag this would be the description and uh, then you have keywords and uh, more so here you would just enter in that information for example I would use the same information as my title for the meta title and as for meta keywords I would just enter in keywords for example I would enter in something like 9 West and pumps and Lucero like so as for uh, meta description I would here uh, enter in a short description because it's uh, limited to 255 characters uh, try uh, to keep it focused for example it would be best to enter in uh, important uh, details about the items and try to leave out any type of uh, promotional text this uh, in my case would be uh, a good meta title tag or you can go a little uh, deeper into things uh, for example like so it wouldn't be a bad idea to enter in information that would uh, be eye-catching because for example if we were to go to google.com and if we were to enter in pumps uh, this for example is the meta description and this is the title so anything that you enter in here will actually show up in this area in Google now simply click on save and continue at this point we can move on to images here we simply upload an image and uh, you can of course add more images if you'd like like so and then simply click on upload and then you can see whether your image is showing up and you can enter in a label uh, this again is important because uh, and a label might be used uh, in uh, image search engines so for example I can enter in 9 West Lucero pumps and then you can also choose uh, your base image small image thumbnail etc for example you can even go to the extent of uh, entering in separate images and then choosing where you'd like them to show up in my case I will just uh, choose all here and click on save and continue if you'd like you can also enter in a uh, recurring profile Recurring profiles are, for example, similar to subscriptions. Uh, so say you're uh, selling vitamins, you can actually uh, offer your customer a monthly uh, reshipment of those vitamins by uh, selecting yes here and then entering in this information and the billing period information, trial period information, initial fees, etc. and uh, automatically bill them every month or so for the vitamins. 
Of course, I will leave this out now and uh, just move on to design. Here, for custom design, you can, for example, uh, customize the way your product uh, page looks uh, if you'd like to do that. If not, you can just leave it as is. I'll just leave it as is. And then for gift options, you can uh, allow a gift message if you'd like. You can either use config settings or you can choose yes here and the customer will be able to enter in a gift message upon checkout. As for inventory, you can uh, select manage stock here or use the config uh, settings. I'll just use the config settings. As for quantity, I will enter in my quantity here. Uh, quantity for items uh, status to become out of stock, this would be zero in my case, or you can use the config settings. As you can see, I'm using the config settings, which is set at uh, zero. You can, of course, change this. And minimum quantity allowed in shopping cart. You can use one, for example, if you'd uh, like to allow customers to purchase just one of these items, then you would enter in one there. If you'd like uh, your customers to pur purchase a minimum of three items, you would enter three there. I'll just use uh, config settings, which is also at one. Later, I'll show you where you can enter in these uh, config settings. As for maximum quantity allowed in shopping cart, this is the maximum amount that a customer can purchase. I have it at 10,000. Uh, quantity uh, uses decimals. This is whether your quantity uh, uses uh, decimal points. If not, or whole numbers, if it's using whole numbers, just leave that as no. Uh, back orders, uh, do you want to allow back orders? Uh, this again, you can set in your config settings. Uh, notify for quantity below um, whatever amount. For example, if you hit below one, it would mean that once you're out of stock, you will be notified uh, of that item uh, reaching below one. Uh, enable quantity increments, this is up to you. Uh, stock availability, you would want to change this to in stock if the item is in stock. And then click on save and continue. As for categories, uh, I don't have any categories other than the default category. I'm actually going to add some categories and show you how this works. Uh, I will also have another video that uh, focuses more on categories, but I'll give you a brief overview of how categories work. Uh, as soon as I finished um, creating this item. As for related products, uh, upsells and cross-sells, I'm not going to go into this right now because I actually have a video on this. So when you're finished watching this video, you might as well watch my other video if you'd like to uh, learn more about this. As for product reviews, this would be if you have any product reviews. Uh, in this case, uh, we don't and product tags you can uh, choose whether the item will be linked uh, to a product tag and customer tag product again uh, this information you would have need to have available and as for custom options if you'd like you can enter in custom options for example I'll enter in uh, size and this will be required and I'll do a drop down for size so I'll enter in size here. This will be the title of uh, the options. And here I would enter in the actual options. So I would enter in, for example, this would be a sort order. I can actually just leave it as so because it will populate this information by itself. And this would be 9 for size 9. And you can either leave the price uh, empty, which would use the default price, or if you'd like to add a... Uh, a uh, higher price uh, for a different option, you would enter in that price here. You can enter in as a fixed or as a percent of the actual price. So I'll just enter in size 9 and then I'll enter in 6, 7, and 8. And now, for example, the sort order. As you can see, I didn't put it in uh, actual order because I wanted to explain to you how this works. The sort order would be um, for example, if I want size 6 to show up first, I would enter in 0 here. If I want size 7 to show up uh, second, I would enter in a 1 here, and 2, and 3, and this is the order that they would show up in. Note that you don't have to start at 0, I'm just used to uh, starting the sort order at 0. This, of course, is up to you. And then uh, simply click on Save and Continue, 
and now we can create our uh, categories as for uh, what I told you earlier about the configuration you just go to system configuration here and then go to catalog and inventory and this is where you would enter in the default settings that the item creation page is uh, using so now let's go to categories manage catalog manage categories so now we're going to create a uh, category. I'm actually going to keep this real simple because I have another video that goes uh, deeper into this. So what I'll do is I'll select my default category here and I'll click on add subcategory because this will be a subcategory of the default category. And then I'll enter in shoes and is active. Uh, you should choose yes. And the URL key, this is similar to the URL key for the, for the product page this would be this key right here so I'll just enter in shoes and I'm then going to choose a product which would be the shoes here and I'm going to click on save category and note that there's also display settings so you can choose how the products will show up in your category it's important to have at least products only if you want the products to show up on the category page so simply refresh your home page and you will see a shoes link here and when you click on this link you will see your shoes and if we click on this link we will see the information that we entered earlier and we also have our uh, sizes here and you can also see that our uh, URL key has been entered and everything looks great so thanks for watching stay tuned for more videos and also be sure to check out creatingawebstore.com